this project was initiated in uh, 2007 when um, a group from the University of California in Santa Cruz and the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute and international partners uh, submitted a pro uh, proposal to the International Ocean Discovery Program, which is a publicly funded uh, uh, research program uh, made up of 21 uh, countries around the world uh, to fund um, international science uh, and that science is available to everyone through uh, the, the data access and, and samples. Um, and um, here we are, we find ourselves on Hawaii um, drilling that, these wonderful sequence of reefs. The data that we're going to be generating, which is about sea level and climate change and the ecosystem, the reef ecosystem response to climate change, is really going to help us better understand Hawaiian reef formation and the marine environment. Um, so we can get fundamental understandings of these factors um, from the work that we're doing. Why we're here in Hawaii is really related to its quite unique geologic setting and because of the active and ongoing um, volcanism, that continuum of volcanism is um, continuing to load uh, uh, the crust and the island um, over hundreds of thousands of years has actually been subsiding very rapidly. And as a result of that subsidence and sea level changes uh, and then reef growth, there's this spectacular sequence of drowned fossil reefs um, that get increasingly older as we get deeper onto the flanks of, of the island of the Big Island or the island of Hawaii and our goal here is to basically sample those different reefs to reconstruct um, sea level climate and reef growth over the last half a million years. So the coring system lands on the seabed it will core in a three inch diameter hole and the footprint of the device is about about three or four meters but it has very little impact on the seafloor. We're very careful about, we have really, te um, really good technicians and good cameras on there so we can pick spots on the seafloor that have no biota and we land on the sea floor and take samples within this three inch diameter. So when we leave, there's really no trace of us being there except for this hole. There's some sediment cuttings around the hole which get sort of swept away by the currents. Uh, so it has really minimal impact on the sea floor. What's really so special about these reef systems is because of the island has been subsiding and the reef has been growing in response to you know, changes in, in uh, sea level as sea level is going up and down and the island is subsiding, we can, um, uh, there's an incredible expanded and high resolution record of those sea level changes. And so by looking at uh, the types of, of corals um, uh, and, and getting precise ages uh, we can reconstruct the position of sea level and sea level changes um, through time. The seabed coring system will not uh, be landing on any modern live coral reefs. So the targets or the places where we're going to be studying are too deep. They range from about 120 meters to about 1200 meters of water depth and modern coral reefs don't grow at that depth. There may be some, um, some deep sea corals or some biota in the sites that are closest to land and that are shallowest, and we have really good cameras on the seabed uh, coring system so that we can look for those and avoid them. And we're working with the Division of Aquatic Resources to, uh, to make sure that we can identify um, these corals and make sure that we avoid them. What's so special about fossil corals is they're um, incredible recorders of past climates, uh, you know, a bit like ice cores or tree rings. The corals actually um, lay down um, seasonal and, and annular uh, bands of growth, about a one centimeter a year, and the geochemists and, and paleoclimate people can basically measure 
the different um, amounts of trace elements and isotopes within the skeleton that they're, they're building to reconstruct um, past sea surface temperature, salinity, um, a whole range of different um, oceanographic uh, conditions at the time they were growing. And so that's really, really important because we can go back to different periods of Earth history when um, the, the background climate was, for example, um, colder than today or in fact warmer to, than today um, and all the climates in between. And that of course has real implications for um, better understanding where we might be going today with respect to um, climate change and global warming because um, we essentially have this um, incredible natural experiment to look at um, how these different um, uh, uh, variations in climate uh, have responded in these different um, uh, warm and cold uh, worlds. It's necessary to remove these samples from the seabed so that we can study them in labs. There are experts in labs around the world that will be looking at these and it's really in order to do the best work with these samples we have to engage uh, international community in this research. There are also labs at the University of Hawaii that are state-of-the-art state labs that will also be looking at these samples. One of the major concerns we have um, uh, in Hawaii, but also you know, reefs globally, is what's going to happen uh, in the future with uh, sea level rise, uh, increasing sea surface temperatures. Um, there's a lot of uh, concern and debate about the, the health of reefs moving forward into the next 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. Um, and one of the ways that we can, um, I, I guess, provide some um, uh, form prediction is to go back to periods of Earth history when climate was changing very rapidly. Um, sea levels were rising very rapidly, it was warming very rapidly. You know, these, we're talking about natural changes um, and we can look and see how the coral reef responded, um, uh, what combination of environmental changes led to uh, reef death or demise and also what what series or combination of environmental changes actually led to reef recovery and, 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 and regeneration. Again, so it's this incredible uh, natural experiment uh, to see how reefs respond to environmental stress. Another major goal of um, the expedition is to uh, recover uh, volcanic samples, um, both that, that may be within the reef structure itself, um, but also at the base of the reef, um, where it, it's essentially forming the foundation for the reef development. Um, by sampling those uh, volcanic material, basalts, um, the geochemists can reconstruct the, the type of eruptions and flows, um, it can also give us more information about um, the rate of subsidence of the island um, and uh, overall it, we hope it will really improve our understanding of the um, general evolution of, of um, the, the volcanic evolution of, of the Big Island of Hawaii. So the plan is for our local uh, participants to give presentations about this research in Hawaii. And generally speaking, these reports will be available to the public. The reports about the uh, expedition will be available to the public. The data is available, samples are available um, to the public. Uh, we also plan on having uh, our, fo our first major post-expedition conference or meeting in at the Big Island and we hope to use that as an opportunity to share information with the local communities and engage them in the research as much as possible. Uh, we look at this expedition as the beginning of a project for which we hope to engage uh, people from around the world including from Hawaii in future research on these uh, really important reef systems.